Alright, what is up everybody and welcome to the Faster Pasta Max Script tutorial for artists. In this tutorial I'm going to share concepts and methods to create the effect here of some random looking noodles or pasta. I ate a lot of pasta when I was a student and even now I'm still a student of Max Script. Uh, this tutorial is for the 3D Studio Max artist that has just a small knowledge of Max Script. And for you, I'll show how just a little bit of thinking can be bundled together to end up with an interesting effect. Alright, as a brief overview, we will create a dummy, query, and set some basic properties. Think about how to define a direction in relationship to that dummy. We will generate multiple dummies as a for loop. And then we're going to look at applying a certain amount of randomness to their positions. I'll show a function that creates a spline from an array of positions. And then we're going to roll that out en masse by nesting the process into a second loop. We'll then clean up the script and on the way we'll notice a speed increase. And finally, we'll attach all of our splines together and that's going to leave us in a good state to apply one final operation to our combined spline model. Alright, are you feeling this with the drums? Let's get started. So we're going to create a dummy. There it is right there. And if you select it and say uh, show properties, then you'll see them pop up down here. I'm going to use the box size and set that to 1. And we're also going to change the name to be original dummy. You can query the name like this. And there you'll see original dummy. We are also going to create a variable called current position and set that to the original dummy's position. And when you query that, yes, zero, zero, zero. So that's fine. Let's clean this up. And we're going to do a little bit of theory on directions and vectors. This is an Euler angle of 45 degrees in the Z axis. We can present this as a matrix three. Here we call the first entry of the matrix three. We can also write this out simply as a rotate Z matrix in 45 degrees. You'll see the output is the same. And what we're getting is a vector, which from the origin to that point in space will give us 45 degrees. So what we're going to do is create a new dummy. The position is going to be what the current position was. And we're going to add on this rotation of 45 degrees as a vector position. You'll see if I change the direction to zero degrees, 90 degrees, 100 degrees, the new dummies are popping up in those locations. So now with this idea in place, we're going to loop the operation so that it does it 10 times. Each time it's going to spawn a dummy that is 45 degrees from the last dummy that it created. Now instead of these dummies just being spawned in a straight line, directly 45 degrees from the origin, I'd like each dummy to have a certain amount of randomness And that can be achieved by adding this random value to our rotate Z matrix. And as you can see, each time that's executed, we're getting a slightly random value of 20 degrees on either side. So we can take this piece of code and inject it into our loop. And we can see a little bit of randomness has been introduced. I'm going to turn that up to 90 degrees on either side. And now we're getting a lot more of a random look. Uh, we're still heading in that direction. We're just getting a bit more of an organic result. Let's take a look at the function now. This function just takes an array of positions and creates a spline, placing a knot at every position in the array. So when we call the function and the array, we'll have a spline returned. Here I've created an array of positions from the available dummies. If you have a look at the first member of the array, it's 000, which is the origin of the first dummy. The second member is the position of the second dummy and so on. So now I call the function, I call the array, and we're given a spline in return. So now that we know how to create dummies which are heading in a certain direction, and we know how to generate a spline from those dummies, we can start to shape the script to create multiple splines heading in different directions. I'm going to create some variables at the beginning of the script, such as the dummy size, the amount of degrees of separation between each spline, the number of dummies that we're spawning, that's the generation, and also the angle variance that we're going to use. 
In this way we can keep the interesting numbers for the script that we want to play with at the top and we won't have to deal too much with looking through the rest of the code when we're finished. Basically we're going to have two loops. The first one says what direction the spline should be created in and the second loop just creates the spline as we've done already. I'll move the function into the correct spot for this script. And our first loop is going to be the amount of splines that are heading off in different directions. So when we run this script, it looks like it's working correctly. We're getting multiple splines all heading out in different directions. Uh, I've got a line to delete the helpers because we don't really want to see those. And in fact, though we were using the helpers to help visualize what was happening and where our spline was going to go, now that it's working, we actually don't need the helpers anymore. And instead, we're just going to use positions. We don't need this new dummy line. That would just become new position. Our first member of the array is just 000. zero, zero. Current position will be new position. And for every new spline, it's going to start at the origin. This variable is resetting the new position. Everything else is fine. And we append our new position into the nots array. We can get rid of the delete helpers line because we don't need that anymore. Now when we run this script, we'll see a significant speed increase as no helpers are needed to be generated anymore. I'll play with some of the variables. So 90 degrees will give us four splines. 180 degrees is going to give us just two splines, etc. Things are working, but what we're left with are a bunch of splines. So let's write a method that's going to attach them together. So let's get these splines attached. So we'll create an array and we'll add every quick pasta object to that array and we'll loop through that array and attach the splines together. And now that that is working, let's change the amount of degrees to one. So we're going to have 360 splines being generated. I'm going to turn up the angle variance to get something a little more random. And if you have the latest version of Max 2018 and above, then you'll be able to script two modifiers to complete this model. These are new modifiers. One of them is the spline overlap, and the other one is renderable spline. And with that, you are done, ready to add materials and render. This tutorial is a jumping off point to show how to grow an idea. I'm sure there are parts that could be a lot more optimal, but if you're using code as an artist, you'll know that what you care about most of all is the result. And as far as coding, there's always room for improvement. If you're interested, you should copy out parts of this tutorial and take it in your own direction. If you'd like to expand on this script, you could consider how to set the distance that the dummy spawns along a vector, or try to spawn pasta onto an uneven surface. That would definitely keep me busy. If you got through this video, thank you very much for sticking with it. I'm still wondering what kind of content to upload onto this channel, but I appreciate any comments. Thanks once again, and see you next time.